Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks and another extra long match of Beyond No Reason. Grab a snack and grab a drink because this is going to be a little bit of a longer one. This replay was sent on over in the Brightworks Discord channel where I pull almost all of my replays actually nowadays. I used to have to go comb through those. I guess the uh, increasing demand for replay submissions has been a little bit kind to me in that respect. So uh, if you feel so inclined to send over a game that you play that you think is cast worthy, you should probably do so over in the, the Discord. There's a special channel for it. If you just check the link out down below, you can join up with all the Brightworks community members. It'll be a grand old time. Today, spawning on Erebos Lake on the southern side here is the Red Commander that goes by the name of Dana, coming in at 32 true skill and a silver tail chevron as well. Going to be spawning on the northern section of Erebos Lake here for the red team and going into a bot lab. All the way across the map here, spawning as the blue commander, goes by the name of Ritsuit. I've had this name translated for me many times. I know what it is. I know how hilarious it is. You'll have to check the comment section to figure it out, though, because I love that sweet, sweet monetization. Apparently Google not so bilingual. Anyway, Reed Sweet here going into an air lab, and I think that makes a whole lot of sense. Here in the back line for the blue team, in the, uh, yeah, definitely in the air spot, I would say. Secluded away from basically everybody else, so I would say it's very fair to go for air here. Sometimes that air start can be a little contentious because it means you don't have anything to grab these metal extractors really easily. Those bots are a whole lot better at it. Just have a little more build power. They're a little cheaper, but of course it does delay you getting into the air. It's also really critical that we get transports out and in time here. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see those coming up basically as soon as the constructor is finished. Those transports really useful for the commanders that want to try and take this middle island here, which is 3.1 metal on both of these little hillsides here. A total of 6.2 of my quick math does quick math correctly. Also plenty of rocks and cacti and other fun stuff like that over on that hillside. So that's a whole lot of good stuff as well. Terminator stepping out into the water here for the red team. Love to see that. We're already starting up a destroyer. We have the vision. Uh, Destroyer is definitely going to be dominant in Erebos Lake. They have a whole lot of range and they can reach out and hit the, sh the uh, sea line pretty hard here. The shoreline pretty hard. For the blue team, it's going to be Lucky. Lucky. Here, Lucky. It's like a Scottish dog's name, I feel like. But anyway, <laughs> maybe that's rude to say. Anyway, Lucky here. Uh, hailing from Germany, so maybe not Scottish per se. But anyway, it's going to be uh, representing the sea, the sea partition for the blue team here. All right, we are ready and all set up. The cards are set. Let's see where they fall here. We do have a couple of rascals on their way across the other side of the map here. We do have Sky Turtle microing them well. Yeah, we get one of the backline right here. Ooh, we're going to get the Metal Extractor. That's huge. Very nice. Rover, or Rascal rather, does snipe the Metal Extractor right there. Out of line of sight from that commander. Are we going to get another one? Oh, no. Heck, Lily has to uh, yeah move the commander. There we go. Finally cleans that up with the commander right there. Dunna. Commander's in position to intercept here, but doesn't manage to catch it, so another rascal sneaks on through. Rover's trying to work their way back as well. Love the aggression right here from the blue team. Really, really nicely done. Meanwhile, a beautiful air scout has come out here. Nuke jet. Guess we know what strategy they prefer. <laughs> Sending across a little air scout already, trying to take a look into the hearts and beating, uh, well, beating hearts and minds of the blue team here. I guess we have a beating mind. You should probably get that checked out by a medical professional. Scout eventually gets shot down right there. Humble Guard transporting the commander very far forward here. I actually really like to see that no reason you could, shouldn't just expand with your constructor back this way. Uh, most of this metal just goes to Sky Turtle here, so we definitely need to see a constructor going forward. Although, that's a little bit tricky, right? Because this commander can easily push up into this hillside or push into this low ground. I say they should take it all. I think you should definitely take all these metal extractors and push to just hold this entire beachhead right here, this whole thing. Just try and lock all this down, build a bunch of static defense over here, lock this entire area down, and then apply pressure across the water right here. I think that's probably the safest way to do that. You can always go for amphibious units, sneak them around this way, pop up underwater, and then back in the back line of the red team over here. Certainly wouldn't be the worst idea. My goodness, these rascals have gone on an absolute tear. How many kills on this bad boy? Five kills, and I think all of those are metal extractors. Let's see if we can find them. There's six. One, two, three, four. Looks like maybe five and six. Somewhere around here, anyways. Still not done yet, either. My goodness, this is a rascal with a story to tell. So many metal extractors going down right there for the... Well, for a bunch of commanders for the red team. This rover, or this rascal, rather, has definitely gotten its values worth. I'm just going to start tickling away at whatever it can. At this point, it's leveled up pretty well, so we can start firing away pretty quick. Yeah, not bad. That is a very, very nice rascal run by right there. Very huge damage. So much metal worth of damage done by a single scout unit right here. Not done yet, either. Still going up, it still gets another metal extractor. What a beautiful source of aggression right here. I love the aggression from the blue team. Absolutely commanding the battlefield right now. 
Now, a bunch of dolphins were sent across the map, and they do not manage to trade very effectively. Yeah, dolphins received a little bit of a nerf, so they're not quite as dominative as they once were. Rascal continuing to blow these metal extractors apart. My goodness, two more go down. That is a Rascal with 11 kills to its name. Bombers are connecting with the pink base here as well. No anti-air available right now. We're starting to put some up right now, but it's a little bit late. Air player comes in with the fighters, trying to clear out those bombers before they can do all too much more damage. And another bombing run does connect with the wind turbines here for the red player, Dunna. Dunna could go for some title generators up here, and indeed I think they should. Title generator is very powerful in this map. 20 title speed. Very, very good. Seeker in the back line as well. Whole bunch of them ran by earlier and did a whole bunch of damage. Right now the red team, wow, look at that. The red team leader actually taps out of the game. Far and away an extremely early leave right there. That's a, uh, that's, that's definitely a bit of a rage quit if I've ever seen one. Air player now going in for a little bit of a counter bombing run here. These bombers have actually uh, no counter air contest here. Yeah, Reesweet has a couple fighters in the air, but there's a couple here for the uh, orange player as well. If they can choose some good targets, they definitely could do enough damage to bring the red team back into equilibrium here. Nice bombs connect right across all those wind turbines. Chain reaction takes out all the wind turbines there. Beautifully done. Another big bombing run connects with a whole bunch of wind turbines over here. And just like that, I think that's probably enough damage to justify this. Yeah, those bombers have done a phenomenal job of taking out some of the critical infrastructure here of the backline players. That's the Hovercraft player over here. Loses all the build power as well as a whole bunch of the energy production. That really, really stings. And here's a bunch of incisor. Snuck up and over the hillside. Really nicely done by Sky Turtle, who has uh, just claimed this, this high ground mountain. Looks like most of the metal extractors are gonna go back to Humblegar here, but the incisors have pushed on through another blasting apart whatever they can over on this base. I mean, how is this not a GG right here? It'll be impressive if the red team manages to claw themselves back. Cage now finding themselves with a tremendous economy because they've inherited all the economy from the red team as well as whatever they had in their own in the back line over here. Eventually, those Seekers do get cleaned up, and Sizer over here still blasting away, though. Yeah, they're pretty annoying. They're difficult to catch here. Not so menacing, maybe, as the Blitz, but still quite terrifying and difficult to deal with. Pawn's going to be the solution that Cage comes up with here. Pumping him out of what was once the Red Player's base. The former Red Player's base. Ah, you know what? That explosion from the build tower actually did a lot of damage to those Incisors, and down they go. So loses the contract, but eventually cleans up all of those Incisors. So the Red Team, definitely on the back foot right here. This is a huge, huge, huge hit of damage right now to the red team. They're going to need some phenomenal trades in order to come back into this game right now, and I just don't see it out on the field here. Abiyuyula. Uh, Ab Abiyuyula. <laughs> the brown commander on the southern side here has a nice little vehicle uh, production set up, but there is some vehicles coming out right here for a Doomish as well. So, uh, a Doomish, sorry. It'll be a pretty much even battle on the southern side there. T1 gunship up in the air, but some Seekers actually shoot it out of the sky. Now that's interesting. Haven't seen Seekers shoot down a air unit in quite a long time. That seems rare. Ah, so much damage over here. Can we get this constructor rebuilding these metal extractors? Since it stayed alive, we might as well use it to rebuild everything over here. No reason not to. Nukejet moves the commander over here via transport to try and screen off some of those units here. Shell Shocker is not going to be ideal for contesting a lot of these. I definitely think that uh, the Brown Commander definitely needs to put some incisors out on the battlefield here. This is what aggression gets you. If you just get aggressive on the other side of the map, you put yourself in a phenomenal position. And that's exactly what we see right now. One of the ways that I think the red team is going to be able to come back here is if Cage can manage to leverage their effectively two-player economy in order to apply a huge amount of pressure to the northern side. Because it looks like there's just one commander controlling all of this right here. But realistically speaking, this is two commanders worth of economy put into one army right here. So it's one phenomenal option. It's one of the reasons why when you see pros go for... Uh, you know, uh, they, they use a take at the early game. Say somebody disconnects or doesn't load into the game and a pro will take a commander. It's not really a disadvantage. <laughs> not really at all. They can uh, pretty much leverage that two-player economy into a huge, huge eco boost and then apply a crazy amount of pressure without it really looking like a crazy amount of pressure. There's just way more units. Cage and Humblegar about to kiss. Commanders finding each other in the night. Yeah, they discovered that neither one of them can build the other metal extractor here. Which one of them will realize first that they should build a torpedo launcher? What a standoff. <laughs> there we go. Cage throws his torpedo launcher up first. Wonderful. Humblegar throws his up second. That means that Cage is going to be able to fire away, and I think that's exactly right. Humblegar forced to retreat from this position because of it. Pulls back a little ways so that maybe uh, can get a torpedo launcher up. Oh, it's going to be tricky, though. Yeah, that torpedo launcher should be able to hit that commander. I do believe. Yeah, Humblegar forced to retreat off that spot right there. Very nicely done by Cage. Gets the torpedo launcher up and denies that metal extractor to the Cyan commander. The Terminator 
mightily claiming these hillsides over here. Man, that is a lot of metal coming in from all these metal extractors right here. Sorry, not the commander. The four metal extractors alone contribute 12 metal per second. That's an easy... I mean, that's more than an early game economy. Aaron, or Aaron, going for a v or a naval lab over on the southern side. That's quite cheeky, actually. You know what? I don't even mind it. Yeah, going for that naval lab is quite nice until there's a massive run by... Oh, no, the blitzes have never looked stronger. There they go, pushing through, breaking through the lines. It just showcases the blitz, and here they are again. Maybe it's time these units get looked at one more time. I think the blitz received a nerf a while back for being overwhelmingly uh, positive. Maybe they're uh, becoming, becoming powerful again. Commander goes down, wipes out all of the base over here, and just like that, all right, huge amount of counterattack damage. Nice airplay, by the way, over here. Nuke jet on top of it. Gets those airplanes into position here and makes sure to keep those bombers off of the back of his teammate. Meanwhile, these blitzes have absolutely ravaged the front lines right here. The powder blue player in shambles. Single metal extractor to their name. Gonna need a constructor in order to rebuild anything at this point. Anti-air turrets going down as well as the metal, or the, uh, metal storage. Pretty annoying. It does mean that a whole bunch of metal now gets thrown away here by the dark green commander. Looks like Powder Blue will tap out of the game at this point. Not thinking it's worth rebuilding. Always worth rebuilding. To the last man. <laughs> medium tanks being cleaned up by sprinters here. I actually don't mind it. I think sprinters are a pretty good option against the medium tanks. One of the things that those medium tanks lack is the ability to fire... Uh, a, a quick projectile, their their weapon is pretty slow. Means that most of the time the sprinters can actually beat the tank just by virtue of being able to uh, out, out kite the tank. They can basically dip dodge, duck dive, and dodge the uh, five rules of dodgeball. Somebody helpfully pointed out in a comment the other day, which is pretty hilarious. I'd forgotten that's where that's from. I had actually, I had, I had, to, I had to read that comment and then realize that that's where that uh, saying actually came from. But anyways, yeah, those sprinters quite powerful against medium tanks. Not a, not a quick solution, but there's not really very many quick solutions until you get into T3 to clean up those medium tanks, just because of how sturdy they are. They're not, uh, they're not over abundantly sturdy, but they're sturdy enough to go up against T2, uh, or at the very least get by T2 if they can't put them down quick enough. Beamer's going down here. Landmine's pretty scary, though. Yeah. Seekers. Uh, sorry, not Seekers, actually. Hover tanks pushing through. A couple of crocodiles. Yeah, managed to sneak through. Uh, laser towers and twin guards going to be enough to to uh, thwart the attack right there, to ward off the uh, aggression coming by from the purple commander. I'm not sure about those hovercraft anymore. I'm wondering if maybe their time has passed and it's ready to just go into T2 at this point. From the backline position here, you'd almost expect to just go into T2. Maybe we go T2 and then pump out hovercraft. Maybe that's a viable option. Go for a whole bunch of those crocodiles or maybe ask for a cortex commander and build some of those... Uh, oh, what are they called? The Halberds, I do believe. The Laser Hover Tank for the Cortex faction. Those can be quite powerful. A very good option, uh, preemptive to the Cataphract or the... Uh, oh, what's the other one? The Lunkhead, that's right. Nicely done by Nukejet. Eating up this beautiful, beautiful metal wreckage over here. Slurping up that juicy 1.25 thousand metal out of that, that uh, Powder Blue Commander that has long since left the battlefield. Going to be funding... Uh, what exactly? Ah, funding a T2 transition. All right, nice. Yeah, we do have T2 constructors putting together a whole bunch of stuff. We have a fusion reactor coming up. We have a uh, advanced energy converter coming up. This is very, very nice. This is uh, very, very, you know, stock standard T2 transition right now from the uh, orange commander. Might look a bit weird maybe if you've looked at the streams, which have been uh, recently pretty chaotic. Rattlesnake is built over here. Oh, that rattlesnake hits hard. We were talking about things that can easily put down those T1 medium, medium tanks, and the rattlesnake is definitely one such item capable of putting out a withering amount of firepower and a devastating arc of fire. Huge, huge field that it can encompass. Sprinters running on by here. Sprinters, hounds, and pawns. A little bit of a cool composition here. The sprinter is going to be sort of a forward-facing unit. They can kind of run forward and scout out exactly what's going on. And then the pawns, nice for a little bit of cleanup duty. Certainly taking down the commander works. And then the hounds, of course, for that long-range firepower. Love this composition right here. Lightning tanks, pretty much the perfect option for dealing with all of it, though. So that is nice to see that they're on the field, but there's just not quite enough of them. I was just about to say, too, the hounds get switched into their gauss mode, which is really nice, especially against these faster-paced tanks. Yeah, the gauss mode makes a whole lot of sense. Makes it much more likely that those hounds are actually going to hit anything, which is always nice. Meanwhile, Humbleguard pushing quite steadily over here on this northern side. Has Cage gone for T2? He did indeed. Okay, we do have, we have a Gunslinger going out here. I think Gunslinger's right in the nick of time. Certainly going to be viable against this T1 medium tank army. 
these uh, vehicles, especially prone to the gunslinger's blistering firepower, especially the impulse it has on its guns can be quite devastating to the tanks. You can see it stuns the tank for just a second every time that it fires. It means that it, uh, yeah, the tanks have a really hard time retreating away from it. That's how it's able to catch things like those uh, missile trucks when they're running away. Also very dangerous to commanders, by the way. Single gunslinger can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a commander. It just takes a little bit of micro, obviously, so you don't get your gunslinger degun to death, disintegrated beyond all reason. Hound push, looking phenomenal, though. Really, really phenomenal. Yeah, southern side still holding strong from the dark green player who rebuilt their base basically over in this corner rather than rebuilding over in the back line. I don't mind it one bit. Hounds now blasting away at whatever they can here. Definitely need to uh, prioritize targeting the lightning tank, though. It's basically the only thing that can kill these hounds. Build power now. The object of devastation. And down it goes. Pops both the build powers there, or the, the singular build power chain right there. Opening up the uh, the hole in the base that will allow those, those uh, hounds to push on through. Last lightning tank that I think is going to be available here for the maroon commander. Well, if we could just kill that tank. There we go. <laughs> Ah, we have some T2 gunships coming out. All right, that's not bad. Those T2 gunships can be quite nice. The Roughnecks are out. The uh, Armada Roughneck gunship does about the same DPS as a pawn, but obviously flies around in a circle, so it's very easy to get a flank damage with those, so oftentimes they can actually end up doing quite a whole lot more. Not to mention, of course, you can swarm units a whole lot more effectively with those than you can with pawns, so overall definitely better than pawns, but uh, certainly, you know, one or two of them not going to make a critical, critical difference. Here's this gunslinger. They have a healing ability, so they will slowly regenerate their health, as you can see in the bottom left. They're kind of ticking upwards while it's taking damage right here. Cage repairing it as well, lovely stuff. Yeah, very difficult to kill those gunslingers. Frustrating to fight them, too, because, uh, yeah, when you fight a gunslinger and you don't kill it, you know that you've effectively done nothing except waste units, which is really, really un unhappy moments for uh, basically any, any opportunist. Title generator's in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, a couple of hovercraft sneaking on by. Immune to torpedo launchers, too, so... Always a viable option to go for hovercraft against Navy. Uh, well, I say always a viable option. It's it's oftentimes a viable option just because of the fact that, uh, yeah, you can sneak by those static defenses, which a lot of Navy players rely very heavily on. Case in point here, torpedo launcher. Absolutely disgusting against these gunboats. One or two torpedoes obliterates those gunboats right there. Very, very nicely done. The uh, Brown Commander is on a pretty, pretty odd situation here. Has T2 production, is starting to pump out some of those T2 bolts. Very expensive T2 unit, but also extremely powerful for what you're paying. Could certainly do a huge amount of work against this. We have Resbots patching together a uh, geothermal over here. It works. Bit unconventional, but it works. Might as well. Big Houndball continuing to build right here. I'd love to see some welders. Somebody was joking in the comment section of the last video about how it wouldn't be a Brightworks video without a little bit of uh, welder praise. And I just got to say, oh, look at that one wagging its tail. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. I praise the welder a lot because it's a great unit. If you're Armada and you're not playing with welders, you're definitely underutilizing the Armada bot T2 kit. You're, uh, you're, you're missing out on some of the heaviest and uh, tankiest and most uh, sustainable firepower there is. Very, very good unit, the welder. Extremely cost efficient as well. Nothing but praise for the welder. The only thing the, the welder suffers from is being a little bit slow, but even that isn't really true. It's no it's no faster than, say for instance, a medium uh, plasma bot or something like that, but much, much sturdier. Yeah, they're a great unit all around. Love the welder. Hound's actually going up against some of these T1 destroyers. Bit of a weird engagement maybe, but uh, works pretty well actually. The hounds have quite a bit of range. Range of 650 versus the, the destroyer's range of 710, so it's a pretty close matchup means that those hounds can more or less go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those destroyers. The uh, ranges that far aren't really going to matter at the at that point because you basically need vision of it that far out anyway, vision or radar. So the ac inaccuracies kind of balance out there more or less. I don't know if that made any sense, but I hope it did. Whole bunch of Quaker firing away over here. Man, those Quakers are tough to deal with. They can be so, so brutal. Especially with their new tweak where they hit a little bit harder. I say new, right? It's been a good while since that tweak has come through. It's just the uh, most recent change to the Quaker, I guess. And I love it. I think it's great that the Quaker is a little more distinguished from the Mauser. It, based, it used to basically just be the Cortex Mauser. Um, but now it's a little more distinguished. It hits harder, fires a little slower. Basically everything that I think Cortex should probably represent. Gunslingers in mass here. I think it's time to transition away from them, though. I think Hounds are probably going to work a little bit better here. Hounds and Welders. 
Those mouths are going to start blasting away at the gunslingers, and their time is definitely long past due. The uh, gunslinger, it shines against T1 uh, medium tanks, but it really, really trails off as you start to get into the T2 era. Ugh, and they're just going to start taking fire from this artillery here as well. Not ideal, not ideal at all. Loads of spy cameras over here. I was wondering what that was on the mini-map. Couldn't quite figure it out. A huge siege of army all over the place, though. Yeah, this, I mean, this push is really devastating. If we can get up this hill right here, and that is the trick here, is getting up the hill, then, uh, yeah, I think this could definitely be a huge, huge push for the, uh, both green and cyan commanders here as they both try and push forward. Oh, we have some ticks running by. Uh, lightning tanks should have absolutely no trouble dealing with those ticks. Yeah, lightning tanks were just out of position a little bit there, but now that they're up in front, there should be no problem whatsoever. Those, uh, ticks will not stand a chance here. They could move down south. There's no lightning tanks down south. Certainly might be a better option for them. Gunslingers and welders stepping forward. Love the love the welders there. <laughs> I'll, I'll just keep raising the welders until people realize just how powerful those are. I mean, look how tanky they are. They managed to actually get to the front line and put in a couple of shots. Gunslinger is going to try their very best. For what it's worth, the Gunslinger does do a lot of damage. I have to give it credit where credit is due. It does a lot of damage even to T2. Huge air raid over here, though. Those are heavy bombers as well. The Blizzard's coming in to try and lay down some super heavy DACA. Oh, they're aiming for the Aphis. Oh, I'd love to see those split. You don't need that many. Ooh. Oh, oh, they will split. Oh, no. Oh, no. 1% HP. Send two bombers back. Send one bomber back. It won't matter. There we go. Eventually, enough bombs do connect right there, and the entire APHIS, as well as the rest of the base for the Lime Green Commander, does go up in a thermonuclear explosion. Beautifully, beautifully done. The resign vote is called. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a huge hit, but I don't know it quite calls for a resign vote here. Again, the entire northern side has been lost for the red team here, so while that hurts pretty bad, it's not the singular technology spot. There's still tech coming up in the back line here for Reed Suite. Still tech coming up as well for Humblegar. There's plenty of eco getting ready and built across the map here, so I'm really not sure that that's exactly the uh, end of the game. Huge play right there by the Orange Commander. Love to see that we're actually using the planes, using the bombers. Oftentimes we uh, see those built in mass and then just sent in big waves against each other. Awesome to watch. Certainly a spectacle. But uh, yeah, as far as strategic brilliance goes, I have to admit it's maybe not the uh, highest up on the old charts. A couple of heavy tanks pushing forward. Beamer turret doing its best. <laughs> uh, I love the beamer turret, but man, it just will not sustain against any of these. Commander in position, though. Beautiful Deegan right there by Hakalele. Seems small, but those Deegans right there can add up quite quickly. You gotta remember, each of these tanks is almost 700 metal, and he just wiped away four of them. That's a uh, huge, huge counter-investment right there. Love to see it. Sharpshooters as well built in mass. And actually, the sharpshooter plus welder combo, I've showcased it before, but it is a really, really powerful welder. Uh, a really powerful armada toolkit. If you can get those welders into position and then get enough sharpshooters firing from behind, it won't really matter what you have going because those welders will soak up all the shots and then the sharpshooters will blast away anything that reveals their position. Yeah, very powerful stuff. Love the, the uh, sharpshooters here. Yeah, those mouths are basically done for. Humblegar forced to go into a counter spam at this point. A lot of those lightning tanks are blasted away as well and now there's only a single one. Oh, the friendly fire is atrocious here. Yeah, those mouths are leading their shots here to try and hit the ticks, but ending up actually hitting their own units instead. Sharpshooters coming over this little hill. Their rifles are going to click, 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 and everything is going to disappear. Just like that, Humblegar has been broken from what otherwise looked like a beautiful siege position. What we needed right there were some of those uh, Pulsar, or, yeah, no, not Pulsar, Starlights, the mobile Pulsar. Big engagement over here, big naval fight. Results in the death of the naval player right here, Lucky. It was forced out of the water. We do have a bot lab, though, so at the very least we can recover. Uh, or recuperate. Try to try to say recover and recuperate at the same time. Wow, and you know what? I really thought we had enough T2 over here, but I guess with all that overwhelming pressure, some fat boys even up on the hill as well. Hakalele going to be able to hold on here as well as Cage Coat pushing forward right now. We do have the Welders and Gunslingers pushing forward on the northern side as well. And just like that, Humblegar is forced into the water right now. We'd love to see some units sent up north here. Yeah, this is just going to get run through. LLTs will be enough to clean up the ticks, but as soon as that T2 starts to go in that direction, this will all start to crumble really, real fast. We are in T2 over here. Eating up these bulls is lovely. You, know, you can see a couple thousand metal in all these wreckage piles here if we turn on our metal vision. 500 there, 1.7 thousand there, a couple hundred there as well. Really, really huge metal investment for those bulls, and it also means that when they go down, it does leave behind a pretty penny's worth of corpse to eat up on the front here. 
What are we suffering from for the, the green commander here? Uh, basically just build power. Yeah, having a hard time spending all that metal, and even not really, we're basically depleting, what was that, about 100 metal per second? Yeah, around 100 metal per second. We're just incoming so much because this constructor is eating it all up off the battlefield. Absolutely love that. Laser towers blasting away wherever they, wherever they can. We do have some heavy tanks trying to push through here. Ticks being quite annoying. Sharpshooters oh, sharp also connect. Oh, you do not want to feel the sting from those sharpshooters. If these can fire multiple times here, this is the end of this push for these heavy tanks. Yeah, there we go. Just like that, the sharpshooters do blast away most of those heavy tanks. Boy, does that burn. Every shot they take is basically a dead tank. Lovely stuff. Once you get enough of those sharpshooters, it's really hard to stop them. You basically have to start investing in some really top-notch technology in order to actually put down enough uh, enough of a distraction and enough firepower in order to actually stop those things from aggressing. Big Mauser ball. Tons of bulls over here as well. We have a nice big ball of units over here. Tons of different stuff. We have uh, loads of T2, some T1 mixed in here as well, but mostly a T2 army. These rovers are actually causing a lot of friendly fire. Okay, well, <laughs> if it works, I suppose. We do have a rattlesnake up here on the hillside, but for whatever reason, unable to fire at the... Oh, there's a radar jammer in here. Oh, very nicely done. Okay, yeah, so the radar jammer contributing a lot here. Actually allowing that, uh, or not allowing that rattlesnake to fire into this composition because it was uh, effectively unseen. Spy tank was revealed there for just a second as well. Looks like none of these units noticed, though. Oh, no. Yeah, rattlesnake. Gonna keep firing away wherever he can. Looks like the radar bot, or the uh, radar jammer, rather, did go down, which is quite nice. More of these naval units push through, but at this point, the Terminator has handily captured the entire naval sector right here. I love that immediately we do see Cage switch into a couple of those platypus, start sending them out onto the water over here to try and maybe, just maybe, get some of those platypus to run by. And I think it's a great idea, yeah, with basically this entire waterway open here. It's going to mean that there's a really viable chance to, uh, yeah, push through over there. Bunch of hover tanks pushing on over in this direction. Okay. Still going for T1 hover tanks. Might as well jump up to T3 hover tanks by this point. Bull's also not going to have a terrible time blasting away at these. Those crocodiles aren't really going to do much damage to the bulls, and the bulls are going to have a field day ripping and tearing apart this entire cluster of tanks right there. There go the anti-air, the, uh, what are they called? Sweepers right there. Lovely stuff. Indeed, this fortified zone does go down here. Ooh, Razorback steps too far. <laughs> Instantaneous evaporation right there as all of these sharpshooters fire. Eleven of them click their guns at exactly the same time, evaporating that Razorback. My goodness, that burns. Humbleguard desperately in need of a bunch of T1. Here we go. We have T1 labs coming up right now. They're out of build. Or there's no build power nearby, though, so there's going to take an eternity to actually come up and online. Oh, that hurt so bad. That Razorback was such a killer investment right there. It was the, the hero, the, the light at the end of the tunnel right there. Oh, bombers. Okay, bombers. Heavy bombers do connect to take out almost all of those sharpshooters. Huge connection right there from those bombers. Sharpshooters were not cloaked, so their possession, position was easily identified. It means that these bombers are going to finish the mission right there. Beautifully done. Wonderful, wonderful airplay. Absolutely saving Humblegar from total destruction, as those sharpshooters would have continued to push in here. And without those T1 labs up to spam out ticks, in order to counter all this, that would have been a complete wipe. Heavy tanks down south here. Loads of bulls. Rattlesnake fell. But it looks like the army was driven back. Yeah, those rattlesnakes are so uncomfortable to push into. They can fire at you from so far away, but they really, really sting. Platypus moving across over here. We also have some amphibious tanks, the uh, Salamanders, which have been officially added to the game. Whoop whoop. Celebratory whoop whoop for the uh, candidate units actually being adjusted and implemented into the game. Spybot goes down over here. Razorbacks up on this northern side are going to nullify this tick stream. Whole bunch of bombers coming in right here. They're going to target the build power over on this side. Okay. It's not the worst target. And you certainly could bomb that and then continue moving forward. So I don't really mind it. There are those salamanders though. Blasting away. As if the uh, salamander already needed, or uh, what was it called? Alligator uh, needed any tweaks. That unit was already insane. The salamander looking absolutely brutal right here. And I love it. I think it's great for a Cortex T2 tank. Definitely very, very powerful. Oh uh, yeah. Don't like that. Those bombers... 
basically targeting the one area with nothing. They could have targeted over here and there would have been little to no anti-air shooting at them until basically they'd gotten on top of the aphises over here. They could have targeted the T3 lab and maybe blown that to smithereens. They could have targeted the T1 lab, but unfortunately they cut across the face and only really managed to take down a little bit of that build power right there. Ugh, a little bit unfortunate. Probably just not enough scouting right there. We do have some T3 hover tanks. The uh, T2 platypus are running through the platypods swarming across this base. Yeah, they're gonna have a field day against that advanced Geo. Firing away at it however they can. They also have a light anti-air missile shooting down those bombers as well, my goodness. The platypus being used as an anti-air unit. Pop goes the advanced, or the advanced Geo right there, takes out a whole bunch of those platypus. Love to see it, but also cuts down the energy production, of course, for the green commander. Already on double APHIS though, so how much does it really matter? Pipple turret firing away now. All right, I think we're clear. Well, it was a lot of damage. We wiped out basically an entire base uh, or two. Salamanders, extremely durable. Managed to break into the back line here. We need to target the build power. Oh no, please target the build power. There we go. Some of the build power falls anyways. The build power falls, this all becomes very, very spongy. However, with it still intact, not a whole lot of damage is going to be done. Oh, the bomber connects. Oh no, the bombers are... Oh, the bombers are bombing too close. They accidentally trigger a chain reaction right there. Oh, that's so unfortunate. You'll love to see it for the pink commander, the Terminator right there. He's probably giddy as all hell. Happy that that uh, managed to goad that bomber into bombing his own teammate right there. But man, that always does hurt a lot. Sharpshooter's now cloaked and moving forward. Going to be really, really difficult to bomb now. You're going to need some way to reveal them here. Especially if you spread them out properly and you keep them in kind of a zigzag formation like that. Makes them much more difficult to find a good bombing angle for. Oh, bomber's coming in against the Aphis. Once more, the Aphis does pop right there. Oh, that hurts. The Seeker definitely feeling the burn from that one. Yeah, bomber's not quite done yet. Gonna come back for the other Aphis as well. The Seeker calls a resign boat. Oh, it's contended though. Oh, those Vanguard's firing away actually. Yeah, you know what, this Vanguard definitely outranged the sharpshooters over there, so that's quite nice. The Seeker's still with the T3 army, though, so essentially forced into a base trace. Uh, base trade, rather. Base trace is the uh, command you run on your IP config, I suppose. <laughs> Find out all the bases on your network. Here come the Marauders. There are some counter Marauders being produced right here, though. Love that from Alex Speed, who's ready for this push right here with Marauders of their own. There's also some Marauders being pumped out here by Rass. I think there's definitely enough production here to shut these down. The question is, will they shut them down before they actually manage to get to the squishy innards of the red team over here? More Salamanders trying to run by. There are Razorbacks out now blasting those apart, so I think that will all be deflected quite casually. This is a green death ball. Fighters sent across. And eh, not quite so many fighters to deal with all this. A couple of those EMP transports. Love to see that. Prioritizing the pawns, which is not as great, but still all right. Nicely done. Nuke Jet does have enough fighters here to clean up the bombers that were sent across. Hounds, however, will manage to actually snipe the build power over here. Actually, I think they might get the Aphis too. Yeah, just like that. The Aphis goes down as well for Ras. Really, really nicely. At least the Seeker managed to get a little bit of vengeance before being forced back and having to rebuild right now. Prude is rebuilt here. <laughs> Not willing to risk out another advanced fusion reactor. We need some constructors here to rebuild some build power. Would love to see that happening. Maybe uh, sending some other units around here. Butler's idle, that's unfortunate. Commander idle as well, could always use those. It's a little bit of build power. Adumis, not doing much on the southern side. Would like to see these units applying a little bit of pressure here. No reason not to. The uh, abductor here. Trying to keep everything nice and paralyzed. For what it's worth, doing a great job of it. I would say the abductor is easily one of the more forgettable Armada T2 air units. Compared to things like the nuclear bomber or, uh, for instance, the heavy bomber, the blizzard, things like that. Uh, the gunships, certainly as well. 
Yeah, easy, easy to forget about that one, but it is a pretty powerful tool, especially just a couple of them to clean up those T3. Their EMP beam does do quite a lot, so it can definitely shut down some of those T3. I would say basically anything up to a Titan, they're going to have a pretty easy time with. Titans, very resistant to EMP. You need quite a lot of them, probably about 10 or so. In the grand scheme of things, not a crazy number, but certainly uh, for, for at least early T2, it would, would be a, a bit of a heavier investment. Humblegar set up a couple of LLTs over here, which will be more than enough to clean up these ticks. There's not really any reason to waste units over here when you can just set up some LLTs. There's a Pulsar over here, which is wasting its shots, so maybe pushing the LLTs a little further so that the, uh, yeah, Pulsar isn't wasting its firepower. Maybe wouldn't be the worst idea. Resbot's over here to patch all this up, though. We are going to resurrect the Advanced Fusion Reactor, which is always great. An easy way to get your teammate back into the game. Resurrect their Aphis for them and hand it back on over. Does either team here have a win condition, is the question. So far, the bombing has been pretty nasty on both teams. We've definitely seen some huge bombing runs. Wouldn't mind seeing a whole lot more, though. We are building Blizzard back here. I would love to see two or three nuclear bombers built. Those nuclear bombers can be very, very effective at cleaning up T3, especially since there's this massive ball of marauders over here. I doubt that the blue commander has vision of it, but uh, nuclear bombers can take out those... Yeah, those uh, Marauders pretty easily, and it makes for a very, very easy way to establish air superiority in a uh, certain zone, because you only need one or two nuclear bombers, and then all the rest of it can go into fighters. Granted, of course, those fighters are, or the uh, bombers, rather, are very expensive, so you're, uh, you're putting quite an upfront investment, but very, very valuable investment. Oftentimes, easy to recoup costs from that as well. You only need a couple of really juicy connections in order to pay back the uh, down payment on the bombers. Mauser 2 firing away over here. I like it. I mean, it'll uh, it'll get the job done slowly but surely here. Certainly if we take out the commander, it could uh, yeah speed things up a little bit. Rattlesnake even built on the front line here, firing a slightly larger shell. I wonder if the brown commander realizes. Certainly has received the, uh, the notification that the commander is taking damage. Trying to micro back the tanks, love that. <laughs> yeah, micro back the uh, injured tanks here to try and keep them alive. Very cool. This is just an Armada versus Armada battle, which is always a little awkward because it does mean uh, effectively either commander could go for the exact same tools, right? Radar jammer over here going to keep things nice and hidden. Oh, a little Razorback run by. Very nicely done. There are those paralyzers there, those abductors rather. Where are we gonna get the fusion? We do get the fusion, nicely done. Ah, uh, you know what? Despite the para the paralysis, I think definitely they've gotten their value out here. One of these Razorbacks becomes unparalyzed as well. Could certainly target down those abductors, but go ahead and go after the fusion reactor over here instead. Not the worst plan. Fighters are pulled. Marauders coming back to try and deal with these Razorbacks. That was a huge run by right there. Very efficient usage of resources. Razorbacks managing to take out basically the entire base right there for Hakalele. Uh, all of the production is still up and running. It's up on this hillside, but now with the T3 marching forward, there's not enough energy to actually fund everything. Down goes a commander over here on the right-hand side that was accompanying that as well. Not sure exactly what we're planning to do with that one. Oh, no, sorry. That was Cage's commander. I thought for some reason the commander was pulled from the blue team. No, that makes a whole lot more sense. Cage's commander over here probably degunning. Very nicely done. Thor going to be used for the rest of this cleanup. The uh, Razorbacks have taken the ridge, though. Well, that's a good, that's a good screenshot right there, too. <laughs> Always on the lookout for a good screenshot. If I can find a good sc screenshot of some late game action without spoiling the game, that's always the uh, the, the absolute pinnacle. Just clickbaity enough. <laughs> Now, I try not to be too clickbaity, but uh, I, I have to admit that the, the spicier the title and the, the more intriguing the premise certainly seems like more people become interested in the game. And isn't that what we're all here for? Get some more people hooked on this awesome game? I don't know. Thor is firing their EMP missiles. Thank goodness the Cage, Ca Cage Quad has remembered that the EMP missile exists and is as powerful as it is, because just like that, that entire Pulsar was nullified by just a single EMP missile firing forward here. Another one going to be turned off as well. Ooh, it's a, a uh, Razorback over here as well. Nicely done. Just like that. Yeah, those Razorbacks, I mean, they're switched off. There's nothing that they can do. They were the critical defense here. 
to find them and in the darkness find them. Or uh, is that other way around? Might be other way around. Razorback's fine against the Thor, but uh, you're definitely going to be in a bit of a tricky situation if it's all you've got. There's a nuclear bomber. We need about ten of them. Sky Turtle moves his commander over. There we go. Has to sacrifice a Razorback to do it, but eventually shuts down the Thor. If it had gotten any further, it could have been cataclysmic, so I definitely think it's well worth it there. Bomber's coming out to shut down this T3 as well. Really nicely done. Oh, EMP missiles launching as well. Very, very nicely done. Man, those Thors are just oppressive, aren't they? Doing a great, great job of shutting down a whole lot of those. Meanwhile, this army down south has eventually pushed forward and done a whole lot of work. It's a lot of bulls and a lot of mausers all pushing forward at the same time. We've also got a T2 slowly eking their way forward. Big ball of uh, consoles over here. The T2 vehicle combat engineer. Bull's not really going to struggle all too much against Marauder, actually. Yeah, they fire fast enough to really keep up with the Marauder's speed, and they do so much damage that they really don't care about the, uh, the Marauder's T3 hit points. Marauder infamously squishy, of course. Prude here. Not going to explode. As is its prime directive. Die without taking everything in a two-mile radius with you. Doing a lovely job of it as it goes down here. Yeah, these hover tanks, though, doing a great job. Nuke Jet degunning down as many of them as possible. Ooh, beautiful degun right there. Manages to catch three of them with a single blow. Very, very nicely done. We'll love some of these hover tanks as well across the pond over here. I think they definitely could do some serious work. Loads of bombers built up right now for the orange commander. I see them all back here. We've got 37 or so bombers all built up. More and more on the way as well. Lunkheads definitely have a place in the Everpresence meta. They are a force to be reckoned with for their durability and also their uh, AOE, AOE to damage ratio. They fire a little shell that does a big impulse area. Very, very good against, say, uh, oh, we're nuking ticks. <laughs> All right, I mean, I guess it works. Very, very good against big clumped up units, for instance. Uh, big big groups of Mausers or medium tanks or basically anything. It's all clumped up together. EMP does not connect with the Razorbacks over here. A trio of Razorbacks marching forward. Uh, one of them gets hit by the EMP. Uh, we'll get D gun down. Another one EMP'd here as well by the Thor as well as the uh, EMP cannons. Very nicely done. Yeah, you know what? Those abductors have definitely done so much work this game. I absolutely love the inclusion of them. I was skeptical a little bit about how uh, valuable they'd be. I know they're quite powerful, but I wasn't sure exactly how powerful. I think they've gotten an absolutely beautiful showcase in this game. Just exactly how much work they can get done. This is looking dangerous on the southern side right here. We do have the bombers flying in formation. Oh, that's kind of a cool shot, right? Bombers flying away. All the way across the map here. Oh, this cannot be comfortable, though. Hesitation is defeat, <laughs> says Herdonian. I think I agree. Yeah, just like that. The uh, T2 pushes forward here. Oh, those abductors cut across the face of this and do paralyze a whole lot of it. Still, though, there's tons and tons of Mausers firing away from the back and even some bulls that were uh, unparalyzed. Just like that, the T3 lab for the Brown Commander does go down here. Loads of wind power, but not a whole lot of fusion. Oh, no, actually, there's tons of fusion power. My bad. Misspoke there. Fighters coming across, though. They smell that the fighter ball is out of position over here, so they come across to shut down a whole lot of the fighter power available right here for the orange commander. Nice little pull right there. Yeah, the fighters moved up north to guard the bombers that had gone that way, but it doesn't matter if oh, a bunch of bombers sneak through. The aphas does pop. Oh, my goodness. What a juicy connection. Both of those bases chain reacting off of each other right there. Blows up the entire backline economy for the red team. Beautifully done. Very, very nicely done. Now, there is still hope. Loads of bombers available over here. If they can manage to do something, it'd be quite valuable. They have to find exactly the right opportunity. Loads of uh, anti-air trucks coming out here as well. I love to see that. We're, uh, yeah, including those anti-air trucks, just kind of putting them all over. Definitely one of my favorite ways to contribute, especially if I'm playing vehicles in the late game pretty easy to just pump out anti-air trucks and throw them literally everywhere around the map just kind of you know go go like this and just kind of distribute them all over the place 
Usually a random spread of anti-air trucks can do pretty phenomenal work against bombers and fighters and all sorts of stuff like that and just like that. Indeed, we do see all of the fighter forces as well as the bomber forces going down for the Orange Commander. Indeed, Nuchet does decide to tap out of this game once again, yielding Cage Coat some more bases to be in control of. <laughs> the Yellow Commander who can do it all. We do have some anti-air over here, so that's always nice. Trying to keep those nuclear bombers off our backs, I'm sure. As well as fighters or anything else that pushes forward. Razorbacks over here doing a great job of cleaning up a whole lot of this. Nuclear missile coming up. Now there is an anti-nuke positioned here. Uh, as well as, I believe, some mobile anti-nukes. Yeah, there's some mobile anti-nukes as well as a dedicated anti-nuke. We'd love to see those mobile anti-nukes spread out a little bit. Maybe put one up north here and one down south. Looks like we have a bit of a push, though. Yeah, Razorbacks as well as those Thors. So hard to stop. Once they're built up in mass, those Thors are really, really tricky to deal with. One option, and this is very contingent on a couple of things, but one option uh, that you're not going to have most games is the Legion uh, Bastion, I believe it's called. Yeah, the Bastion. It fires a laser beam, a heat ray beam. Very, very good against T3 units. Would definitely recommend throwing two or three or four of those up in your main base if you suspect that you're going to be the subject of T3 assault. Would definitely recommend. Those things are super powerful. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you don't really need to worry about it. But just keep that in mind, maybe, if you're playing Legion. Very nice. Yeah, those, uh... Those Thors, man, they are tough. Demon on the field now. We start blasting away at the Thors. Does a good amount of damage, too. You can see a couple percent falling off that Thor every second. Demons for T3, though, are quite squishy. Their uh, sort of trademark is that they burn bright and burn fast. And then they're pretty much spent. D-Gun does connect with one of those Thors over here. Sky Turtle looking for another one. Ooh, can we get three? Can we find three? Ooh, ooh, another one, another one. Oh, before it fires. Very nicely done by Sky Turtle right there. Beautifully done. I think these Pulsars and Vanguards and Thors are going to be more than enough to clean up the rest of these. That D-Gun right there absolutely saved the blue team. Otherwise, I think those Thors would have just had enough sustain to get into the back line here, but I just don't think there's enough here. Sky Turtle with some more beautiful D-Guns right there. That Cortex Commander is a hero. He'll be going back to his world, his home world, reporting a uh, significant success, reporting a tremendous, uh, yeah, battle. A glorious battle. Push. You can kill his Aphis with that many Thors. WTF, says the Seeker. I would tend to agree. I think Hubblegar could definitely push forward right now and absolutely obliterate all this. There are some counter Thors over here, but Thors don't really counter Thors. They uh, they kind of bounce off each other, essentially. <laughs> Sounds a bit weird, but I promise you the way that that interaction works is not as... Uh, yeah, not as counter counterable as you might imagine. Nuke is up in the air. Comes across the map. We're targeting the T3 facility. I think there's a pretty good scout over here. Yeah, we do target the T3. Popping all the build power right here, shutting off that T3 production facility, meaning that Thor will never see the light of day. Meanwhile, the Cyan Thors are marching forward. One apiece has fallen so far. Defender's advantage is real, but the Resbots can also equalize this. If we send these Resbots forward and start resurrecting the Thors and sending them back into the battle, this could certainly turn. The spread of the Thors for the Yellow Commander is looking a whole lot better right now. The surround with those pit bulls also contributing a lot, meaning that those uh, yeah yellow Thors are doing basically double damage right now. You see that guy did about eight damage, I want to say six or seven. Let's see. Hard to say. I think it was about six damage, six percent damage. Not bad. The uh, yellow Thors have pushed too far though. <laughs> yeah, they pushed past the uh, actual Thors they were trying to defeat. Just like that. Cyan Thors are in the base. Oh no. Aphis, obviously the prime target right here. One, two, or three blasts, and down go the Aphis right there for the yellow commander. Blows up Cage's entire base right there taking out the very last remaining speck of economy here for the red team. With that push, we bring us to our final endgame economies here. 200 metal per second right now for the red team versus 
just uh, about 2,000 or so for the blue. Absolutely phenomenal. And that will definitely be the push that the blue team needed here in order to close this one out. I'm going to go ahead and speed this one up because I do believe we all know exactly where this game is going. Alex Speed going to degun down this tank. But it will only be a matter of time before the production catches up with the red team. All of the remainder of their units do eventually fall. The Terminator, Alex Speed, and Rass all holding on as valiantly as possible here. <laughs> we, do, we do have more bombers coming across as well, nuclear bombers included. Trying desperately to connect with everything, but just like that, the blue team seizes victory in today's game of Beyond All Reason. What a banger of a match. Let me know what you thought about it down below. And just a reminder, of course, that if you made it this far, you can always show your appreciation by hitting the like button or the dislike button, whichever you say. Leave a comment if you hit the dislike button so I can improve my casting, as I always am trying to do. And I will promise you to see you in the very next game of Beyond All Reason. Peace out, folks.